Thank you to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for another worship experience. I wish above all things that you are prospering in life and in good health, even as your soul prospers. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, through your word today, we pray that you would help us to realize that we can do nothing to change our lives for the better. Uh, open our hearts and minds to always acknowledge the power of your amazing grace at work in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk for a little while about life through death. Life through death. Our text for this today is Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 6, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, Or do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus, a married woman is bound by law to a husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is still alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ. So, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the newness of life of the Spirit. Again, I'm talking about life through death. Now, because we die in this life eventually, then we enter eternal life. From this place we call home here on this planet, we uh, that's named Earth, we are destined to leave and go to our final home. Now, where do you want to, your final home to be is an important question. We can spend eternity away from God or our, our choice can be we can spend eternity with God. The choice is up to us. And, and where we spend does, there's a big difference. Now, today we're starting a series that looks at our wretchedness and our inability to change ourselves. We must take a look at the law and how it works in our lives and our relationship with the Lord. Because the law started in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Shortly after God had finished uh, making man and then he created woman, uh, God gave Adam a command of what to do and not to do. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 through 17 uh, reads, And the Lord com God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, of course, Adam and Eve did not die instantly, but spiritually they did. They, they, were, they were separated from God. They were exiled from the garden and so forth. But let's look at it a little closer instead of me trying to explain it all at once. Uh, the result was that Adam and Eve did what they were commanded not to do. And, a relation, and as a result, their relationship with God was ended. They had been jo enjoying a presence with God, but all of that ended. The reality 
of death became a part of their lives. They were banished from God's presence. They were evicted from the Garden of Eden. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, we were reconciled by the death of Jesus on Calvary. Now, to better understand our text in chapter 7, verse 1 through 6, allow me to share a few verses of the of uh, chapter 6, a few of the final verses, verses 16 through 23 of uh, chapter 6 of the book of Romans. It reads, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, Paul says. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurities and to the lawlessness uh, leading to more lawlessness, and that is the true way it is, you don't just do one something wrong. It leads you to something else and it keeps compounding. So uh, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruits were you getting at the, that time from the things that you were doing and that you are now ashamed of. The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, the law dominates, controls man only as long as he lives. Paul uses marriage only as an example and nothing more in our text. So don't try to look at it in any other way for any other purposes. Too often, we twist scripture to get it to say what we want it to instead of what God intended it to say. Paul is only talking about the law, and he uses the marriage as an example to help us better understand the workings of the law. Now, again, the law dominates man only as long as he lives. And the law is uh, the law is dead to believers. And we must learn to walk in that newness and not in the law. Too often we're trying to walk in grace, we're trying to walk in the law. The law is dead to believers. The law is alive to those in the flesh, but the law is disabled by conversion. Now, the law dominates and rules over man only, again, as long as he or she lives. The law applies only to the living. It has no impact whatsoever upon the dead. A dead man is freed from the law. It has no jurisdiction or power over a dead man. Now note, there are two positions of the law illustrated in the law of marriage. The law is alive or active to the living. 
They are bound to each other until the death of at least one of the party. Now, I hear somebody asking, what about divorce? Divorce comes into play when, for a legal reason, a biblical, uh, like a b- biblical adultery, allows for dissolving the marriage because of our disobedience, of our inability to keep the law, to adhere to the rules of the law. God allowed Moses to give them a writ of divorcement because of their stiff neckness. Now, this indicated mainly that we were at a weaknesses, weakness when it comes to obeying the law. And when you run out and get a divorce, remember, you've got a weakness to obeying the law. The law is dead or inactive when death enters the picture. Paul says the wife who loses, who who, who is loosed or freed from the law has uh, when her husband dies. She's she's the the marriage turns is 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 loose and she's free from the law of marriage when her husband dies and vice versa. A husband is freed from the law of marriage if his wife dies. But as long as both are alive, they are bound by the law of marriage. The law condemns the living who violates the demands. The woman who marries another man while her husband lives is guilty of breaking the law. Death frees a person from the law. The wife is free from the law when her husband dies. Remember, Paul is using marriage as an example to help us to better understand the law. Now, when I'm presiding over a wedding ceremony, I always insist upon the standard vows that are based on biblical principles. When the couple agrees to be bound together until death parts them. The vows become a godly endeavor. In other words, it it, it shows Matthews 19 and 6 that says, So then they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate or put asunder. Now, the main point is that we cannot keep the law ourselves. The point is clear. When death enters the picture, a person is no longer under the law and he can no longer be condemned by the law. Death forever frees a person from the law, from its demands, from its guilt, from its condemnation. Now, from here, we'll we'll look at baptism briefly. Baptism was the first official act of Jesus to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus shows us by example the importance of dying to the law. To this day, Baptists believe that shortly after a person believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth, that Jesus died and rose from the dead to pay our sin debt, the ordinance of baptism is required and it acts to fulfill all righteousness in God's sight. Not that it saves us, but it is an outward demonstration of an inward change that has taken place in our heart. A dying to the law or any hopes expected of the law to make us right with God. That's baptism. We must, by faith, accept the salvific work of Jesus Christ in our stead. He died in our place. Now, Genesis 2 and 9 says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life 
also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In chapter three, when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden tree, they were informed upon their eviction from the garden of Eden that there is only one way back into a personal relationship or uh, into God's presence. They had to eat also of the tree of life. They had eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But now in, in, in that tree of knowledge of good and evil had severed, had broken off their relationship with God. And when your, your relationship with God is broken, your relationship with the life source is broken. Eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil had brought them death or a broken relationship with God. Now, eating from the tree of life gives believers eternal life and reconciled relationships, personal relationship with God. John chapter 14, verse six says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man comes unto the father but by me. Now, we as Baptists seems to be on the right track by acknowledging that the office of John the Baptist was to bind believers to a new life, symbolized by immersion in water. Baptism gives a vivid picture to the symbolic gesture of dying to the law and sin and coming alive by grace and a new life in Christ Jesus. We go down into the water full of sin and filth, and we come up bearing fruit in our hearts, a new life in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter seven, verse eight says, don't you remember how it was? I do perfectly well, Paul said. The law codes started out as an excellent piece of work. But what happened? Was that sin, what happened though, was that sin found a way to pervert the command into a temptation, make a, making a piece of forbidden fruit out of it. The law code, instead of being used to guide me, was used to seduce me. Without any paraphernalia, the law code sin or sin looked pretty dull and lifeless. And that's the way life is with us. Until we are instructed not to do something, then sin comes alive in us and start percolating the idea. I wonder how would it feel? I wonder how would it taste? And then we start looking to see who's watching. Us. And before long, we will have done what we were instructed not to do. Have you ever uh, been instructed not to do something by your parents? And before long, you couldn't wait to do it. I believe all of us are guilty. But sin has a way of taking the law and causing us to desire to disobey the law. And the only way that we can be freed is to die to the law. And we die to the law in baptism. And can I, can I just remind us that what, sim, what, what, what baptism symbolizes? Can I remind you that one Friday on an old rugged cross, on a skull-shaped hill, Jesus the righteous one died for the sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. 
and he died in our place. And our death through baptism means that we believe in what he did. We put all of our trust in what he did for us because there was no way for us to do what the law required, to have a, 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 a blemished free, a spot free sacrifice. And the only way that we now can offer ourselves as a living sacrifice is because we have accepted Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that he provided without spots or blemishes to die in our place. And now he's our tree of life. He's our way back to God. Now, along with dying, he was buried. See, see how his death, burial, and resurrection follows along the baptism line, that follows along with the doing away with the law or fulfilling the law so that we could live under grace. He died. They buried him. And three days after they buried him, he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. The law has no power over us once we die to it. And I thank God that I can still live a life that is dead to the law because now I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Well, that's all I've got for tonight. I pray that, or today rather, I pray that you will get it uh, along the way. God is the one that gives the increase. I understand now that I can explain it in such a way that, with such clarity that you can understand it. It's only when God, through his word, and that's why studying is important, along with the Holy Spirit guiding you. He makes sense out of what's impossible for us to understand ourselves. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your living word and your spirit that brings your word alive in us. Give us understanding so that we can apply what we have heard in our living daily. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, don't forget to mask up. Wear your mask. Whenever you're out uh, in public, uh, practice social distancing. Uh, whenever you're close to people outside of your home, wear your mask. And then wash your hands often. If you go out and get the mail from the mailbox, then when you get it open, wash your hands. I wash my hands so much now my hands are dry all the time. And I still haven't gotten to the point where I remind myself to put some lotion on them. I'm trying to be manly. You know how it is. But uh, we can do our part to fight this pandemic. And, and, and don't think that it's over with. Don't think that it's a hoax. Because people all around us are coming in contact with somebody that has tested positive for the virus. And it's important that we be careful. So take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.